Hey guys and welcome back to another video and I hope you guys are having an amazing day. So in this one we'll be focusing on set 3 of the mock 2022 exam paper series. So as always this paper is actually based on 1H, 2H, 1HR or 2HR. More or less they're all kind of the same. They just remix questions of questions that might not have been asked in other papers. But yeah, as always guys, just we're going to go through it. You can pause and play. But other than that, let's just jump straight in and just go straight to the question, guys. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So Steffi is going to play one game of tennis and one game of chess. The probability that she will win the game of tennis is 0 0.6. So we can write here a little note. Probability that she will win tennis is 0 0.6. So this means that the property that she does not win tennis, so instead of saying lose, it's better to say not win because maybe drawing is involved. And that's going to be 0 0.4, okay? And the reason behind this is because all properties must sum up to 1. Now the next one tells us the property that she will win both games is 0 0.42. So it's what this means is that the property that she will win tennis and also win at chess is 0 0.42. So what this also means, and we can separate this probability, is saying that the probability that she wins tennis the first round, then she wins chess is 0 0.42, and winning tennis is going to be, well, we already know what that is, is 0 0.6 times winning at chess is 0 0.42, and then just rearranging to find the property that she wins chess. So you could just divide these two, and if you divide it, you'll find that probability of winning chess is actually... 0 0.7 or 70. Okay, so that's good. And what that also means, guys, the property that she does not win chess is going to be 0 0.30 or 0 0.3. So I feel like we got everything now. Now, the question wants us to work out the property that she will not win either game. Well, we have all the probabilities. The property that she will not win tennis is 0 0.4, and the property that she will not win chess is 0 0.3. So if we times both 0 0.4 with 0 0.3, the answer should be 0 0.12 or 0 0.12. And we're done. Okay, question 17. So the function f is such that fx equals x minus 4 all squared. Okay, so this is defined by fx. And they want us to find f1. In other words, replace the x value of 1. Well, if you just do that, f1 is just literally going to be 1 minus 4 squared. And you put this in a calculator, you just get a straight answer of 9. So that's it. Now B, state the range of the function f. So to find the range, they essentially want us to see how the graph looks like and see what values of y it takes. So to plot this function, I'll just plot it like this. You got your x and you got y axes. We know for sure that because the function is x minus 4 squared, this means it hits at x equals 4 twice. So if it hits at some curve twice it means it bounces so suppose x equals 4 is here this is going to be a quadratic bouncing of it like that so as you can see it hits on the axes and the lowest value on the y axis is 0 and the highest is well is infinity so we say that the range of f so the range of f x is greater than equal than 0 and that's it because it starts from 0 and it goes all the way up and lastly for the next question it says that the function g is such that gx equals 4 over x plus 3. Work out fg2. Okay, what this means is that you have a function g and it goes inside f. So that's how it works. The second layer goes inside the first. Now what they're trying to tell us is that you should find g2 first. Well, g2 it just means replace the x with 2. So f over 2 plus 3 is actually 4 fifths which is 0 0.8 if you like. And now you're going to put this 0 0.8 into fx. So we can say, right, f 0 0.8 is going to be 0 0.8 minus 4 all squared. And this is going to give us a nice result of 10.24. And that's functions done for you. So the diagram shows the graph of y equals fx for x between minus 4 and 12. All right, so this looks like a cubic graph, and they got a point P over there. Now, the point P on the curve has X coordinate 2. So it has an X coordinate 2 and actually a Y coordinate of, and if we zoom in carefully, we can see that 3 is up here, and everything's going up in point 2. So this should hit over here at 2.4. So the coordinate here is just 2 and 2.4. 
Now, they want us to use the graph to find an estimate for the gradient of the curve at P. Okay, so when they ask you to find a gradient at a certain point, you literally need to get a ruler and try and draw a straight line which touches P at one point. So something like, well, not like that. But I've actually previously done it, and it looks a bit like um, this. So this is kind of what they want. So you get a ruler and you just draw a straight line like that. And well, to calculate the gradient, you simply just pick two points. And what I chose is the one at P, which we said was 2 and 2.4. And you'll probably realize that you should get a y-intercept of roughly 3.6. Now you can use this as a coordinate, because if you, if you know the y-intercept, then you know the coordinate for that would be 0, 3.6. So you can say the other corner would be 0 and 3.6. And well, guys, the gradient is just literally the change in y over change in x. So m equals change in y over change in x. That's essentially the difference between the corners. So over here, the change in y is just basically 3.6 minus 2.4 over 0 take away 2. If you put this in the calculator carefully, guys, you should get an answer of minus 3 over 5. Or minus 0 0.6 and now the second part actually follows on directly from the first part it says hence find an equation of the tangent to the curve at p give your answer in the form y equals mx plus c well the tangent is just literally the equation of this straight line and the, we know that the general form of an equation is always y equals mx plus c we know what m is m was just minus 0 0.6 we know what c is c is the y intercept which is 3.6 so because you know what m is and you know what c is, then we can say that the equation is just simply y equals minus 0 0.6x plus a y-intercept of 3.6. Now in the mask scheme, and I haven't got the mask scheme yet guys, it could be a bit different. Maybe they got 0 0.5 or 0 0.7. So this is just an estimate, yeah? And usually with estimates, it could be a range of answers because it depends how, how, like how you draw your line. But it shouldn't be too far off these values. And finally, guys, it says here that the equation fx equals k. And by the way, fx equals k means that you hit um, fx with a constant. So let's say k could be, I don't know, uh, fx equals 2. This is the same as saying y equals 2. So this is just a straight line that hits the y-axis. So something like, like this, a straight line. Now, what they're trying to say here, and let's just read the question. It says that this equation has exactly two different solutions. Use the graph to find two possible values of k. Now, two different solutions literally implies is that it cuts through um, two different uh, parts of the curve. Well, if I just drew over here for a second, just in the, as an example, you'll see it cuts at three points, so it can't be in the middle. Because you'll realize that almost everywhere it's three points. Now, when they say two points, the only possibility is if there's a turning point. Well, we can see that there's a turning point here. And if you drew a straight line there, you'll notice that it hits exactly once there, and it will hit here as well. So in fact, one of the possible lines for y would be y equals, and you can see that it hits at 3, yeah? So this is at y equals 3. And you'll notice that the other possibility is at the other side, the other turning point, which is from here. So if you draw another straight line here that cuts across, it'll go all the way across, and it hits, well, at y equals minus 1. So these are your two solutions. And that's it, guys. And you can say k is going to be well, 3 or minus 1. And that's it. All right, question 19. Okay, so they give us a histogram now. And it tells us that this histogram gives information about the heights of all year 11 students at school. All right, so you got your height between 140 to 190, and you got frequency density on the y axis. And the area of each block would be the number of pupils or the frequency. Now, there are 160 students in year 11 with a height between 155 and 170. So that tells us that, well, 155 should be this margin here and 170 is here. So essentially, the area of these two blocks, this one and that one, has a total area of 160. Okay. Now, work out the total number of students in year 11 at the school. All right. So an easy way to do this, guys, and since we've got some information already, is to kind of try and figure out what a height would be, yeah? Because the main idea is to basically essentially work out the area of these blocks equated to 160 and then find what the height could be. So an easy way to do this, I'll say let's just count in ones, yeah? So for every major line like here, this would be 1, 2, so I'll put this as 1, 2, 3, 4. 
and just to make it easy just think of this as 4x 3x 2x and and just x yeah now if you work out the area of this block you'll realize that you got a base of well the difference is 5 and a height of 4x and well 5 times 4x will just give us 20x so that's the area of this block for the second block or this block here the width is 10 and the height is 2x so be 10 times 2x is also 20x so that means the total area of this block and that block which is 40x is also equal to 160 students that means if you just if you do the quick math and divide by 40 you realize that x is just going to be 4 so that means that the value for every single major frequency density is 4 so i could just now update this so just cross out this x this is 4 this is 8 this is 12 and this is 16 and guys like for the rest of this problem you just basically now just work out the area of the rest of the blocks so for example this block over here has a width from 170 to 185 so that's a width of 15 so you got 15 times a height of well what's that that's between 4 and 6 4 and 8 so that's a height of 6 so in your calculator you just write okay 15 times 6 put that in your calculator and you get a an actual area of 90 for the next block is five times or oh, uh, that's annoying so this width this height is actually a bit different we know that the major line here which is two and I think every single line is going up in 0.4 so in fact the height is 2.4 so in your calculator this area would be five times 2.4 and what well, five times 2.4 is just basically 12 now for the last block and that's the first one the width is what between 140 to 155 which is 15 so the width is 15 so 15 times and the height is now from here up to this line uh, to check carefully we know here is 6 is going up in 0.4 so that's 6.4 6.8 7.2 so 15 times 7.2 if you do that you should get a result of 108 and yeah guys now all you do is literally just um add them up yeah so we know that these two blocks are 20 x x is 4 meaning these two blocks are 20 times 4 which is 80 and 80 and so adding all these results 108 plus 12 plus the two 80s and plus the 90 you should get a total number of students of 370 year 11s at the school <laughs>